y'all, it's Trish. Kay and I were challenged by May May over at May May Made It to use an LED candle as part of one of our projects. So for this project, I'm going to be using an LED pillar candle that I picked up from Ikea, but you can also get these at Walmart and I've even seen them at the Dollar Tree. Two wooden embroidery hoops. I got mine from Walmart, but they're actually cheaper at Hobby Lobby a scrap piece of wood round that my sister gave me, but you can get these from the Dollar Tree, some floral foam, some green moss, some twine, some wood glue, a furniture repair marker, some greenery that has been recycled, some floral picks I got from the Dollar Tree and Walmart, two tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I'm going to do is stain my wooden embroidery hoops. Now you're only going to be using three pieces of these, but don't get rid of that fourth piece because I have a project planned for next week where we can use it. For this project though, we only need two of the inner pieces and then one of the outer pieces. I'm using my furniture repair marker that I get from the Dollar Tree and I am giving this a really good stain all over. I made sure I got the top, the bottom, all those little sides. I didn't want any of this raw wood to show once I put this together. I love using these markers. Y'all hear me say this all the time. They don't make a mess and they don't smell. <laughs> That's the most important part. You can use them inside. I also stained this little wood round. I got this from my sister. She has a friend who does woodworking and they're always giving her these scrap pieces of wood and she's been so kind as to share these with me. But you can get wood rounds from the Dollar Tree. I've seen them there as well. Now we're going to put our hoops together and make an orb. I take those two inner hoops and I put one inside the other and then I use some hot glue to hold those in place. Now we're going to take that outer hoop and put it on top of those two and then tighten up that screw to hold it in place. And once I know that I have it where I want it, I use some wood glue and some hot glue just to secure it. Now I'm going to take some twine and I want to cover up this metal piece that's at the top of this. I glued it to the bottom of this and figured out I needed to cut it because it was too much to try to pass that through there. And then I just start wrapping. I wrap in between the sections and this actually sturdies it up too and gives it more strength. And then once I get to the point where I have got those sections filled in and I start going out, I just wrap around and around where that metal piece is. When I get to the end of the screw where it kind of drops off, I put a little bit of glue there to give it a little bit of security. And then when I get to the end of the metal, I glue it again. Then I start wrapping it back around itself. When we get back to that screw, I put a little more glue there and I wrap it until I can't see it anymore. And then I wrap all the way back across and I do the other side the same way. Make sure you put a little glue there at the end to secure it. Then you just kind of come back with it and I end up cutting it off and securing it with some more hot glue. Now I'm going to do the bottom as well. It doesn't take as much, but I wanted it to have that extra security. So I cut off a little piece of twine and I just glue it down to the bottom and then I just wrap it in between those hoops. And I only wrapped it two or three times between each one. And then once you get it wrapped up there and secured down, I trimmed it off and secured it with some hot glue. Now we're going to attach our orb to our base. When you do this, this orb sticks up because of the way it's put together. So I took two of my tumbling tower blocks, figured out how far apart they needed to be, and glued them to my base with some hot glue and some wood glue. Now my orb fits in there and it has something to glue it down to. I put some hot glue down and hold it until it sets. Now I'm going to take a piece of that round floral foam that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just used a little bit of glue on the parts where it touched and secured it down. Now I want to take this greenery that I am recycling and I'm going to have it coming out of the side of my floral foam. 
I figured out that there was a lot of white that was going to be showing. I probably should have got the green round floral foam, but I didn't. I got the white and I looked in my stash and I only had a little bit of this green moss. So I grabbed it and took my hot glue and went around where my candle was so I could tell where I needed to fill in and then I just took it and I put down hot glue and spread it out until I had everything covered and I had just enough to cover this foam. <laughs> Once I got that covered I finished filling in with that greenery and then I took these that they kind of look like ferns they're really wispy and i had one coming out of each of my openings and just kind of spilling out of my orb this greenery actually came out of a grab bag that Kay got from michael's last year this has been such a good bargain and we have loved using this in our pieces now I'm going to take some of these little white flowers that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm sticking one in each opening so that I have my flowers coming out as well. I love how this looks spilling out of it onto the table. Now we're going to take some of these coral flowers that I got from Walmart. They look almost like cabbage roses. They are so pretty. I put them around my candle and then I just secured them with some little hot glue and there you have it. And there's our finished centerpiece. I am really loving this piece. It looks so pretty sitting in the center of my table. It's the perfect touch of spring. And even my husband likes this piece. Today we are teaming up with four talented friends for a Fab Five friend collaboration. We are really excited about this one because all of our friends are from Alabama. Let us explain how the collab works. Our five channels have joined forces to bring you some spring-themed DIYs. To add a twist to our collab, each channel challenged another channel to use a specific item in one of their projects. We will have the link to the channel that we challenged, as well as to the channel that challenged us in the description box below. Please go over and check them out. See how well they did with their challenges. We know you won't be disappointed. There will also be a giveaway attached to this collab. Stay tuned to find out what you can win and how to qualify. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using four packages of these five gallon paint stirrers that I got at Home Depot. They are three to a package, so we will need 12. Some white chalk paint, I'm using Waverly and a paintbrush, of course three of these tiny screw eyes, one package of these carrots that I got at the Dollar Tree, these florals from the Dollar Tree, these wooden beads that I got at Hobby Lobby when they were 40% off, one six inch grapevine wreath, some wired ribbon, and finally some floral wire and my wire cutters. The first thing I'm going to do is cut off one inch from two paint stirrers, two inches from two paint stirrers, three inches from two paint stirrers, and four inches from two paint stirrers. I used my four inch table saw that I got at Harbor Freight. And then I gave my pieces a good sanding. And then I went in and painted all 12 of my sticks in my white Waverly chalk paint. It took about two coats on the front side. I did not paint the back. Two of the full size sticks I needed to cut to be my supports on the back. So I'm cutting them right at the measurement where the stick starts to go in for the handle there. I laid out my sticks a half inch apart using my cutting mat that I have on my table that just made it so easy. And I used painter's tape and taped it down. I put one tall one in the middle, and then I just went down in size on each side of that middle one. I put the one inch cut to the right and left, and then I put the next two inch cut to the right and left, and so forth as I worked my way across. And then I go in with my support right across where the two outer ones dip, and I'm going to put a crossbar right across there. And I use my pencil and I'm just going to trace that out. 
where it's going to go. I'm first going to glue down my bottom support piece. I'm just going to put wood glue around kind of in a square and then I'll use hot glue right there in the center. I'm placing this bottom support one inch from the bottom, which is really easy to do with those measurements already on my sticks. And I'll do the exact same thing to attach the top support, just using wood glue and then some hot glue in the center, attaching it where I drew that line across my sticks there. For the final support piece, we want it to go at a diagonal. So I just took my ruler and drew a line and carefully cut that on my table saw, but it took me so long, I'm not going to show you that here. And then I'll just glue it down as well across on the back. I wanted to put a little handle on the side to make it look more like a garden gate, but the one I got at Hobby Lobby was just too big. So later on, I'll try to find one smaller and add it to it. And now I'm going to go in and make some little holes on each side to put in my screw eyes. And I'll just twist those down. And eventually I'm going to put one towards the top on the middle support as well. And now I'm measuring for my wooden beads and I'm going to use this garland that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I'm just going to cut that off and place the second tassel that was on the end back on the end of my beads. And I'll just use a little floral wire and just wire it on to my screw eyes. I'm going to leave five beads hanging down on each side. Now let's make a bow. I'm just going to do two very simple bows using about three inch loops on each side with an extra loop in the middle to hide the floral wire. We'll just cut that off, use that floral wire around the center and twist it down, dovetail our ends. And now it's time to work on our wreath. I'm going to use these florals that I got at the Dollar Tree. I just push the leaves up and then cut off four stems. And then I'm just shoving them down into this grapevine wreath and putting two on each side and making, look, making it look as presentable as possible. Using that pink organza ribbon, I'm just going to twist a little bow in my hands, two loops on each side, little floral wire, cut it off, trim it up, and then we'll just glue that right down to our wreath. And now I'm putting the third screw eye right in the middle of my gate at, towards the top. And then we're going to place on our wreath, just using a little floral wire and let that hang down. And now I'm going to wire on some of those carrots. I'm going to put four and it worked out really nicely. I just put them every five beads, just like the drop on the edge. And now we'll attach our bows on each side and our gate is done. Later on, I'm going to add some bunnies right down at the bottom sides, but I do love my gate very much and I plan to decorate it for each holiday. Happy Easter, y'all. Hey y'all, we are so happy that you stopped by our channel. As part of today's collaboration video, we will be giving away a $50 Amazon gift card. To qualify to win, all you have to do is watch all five videos in the collab and comment on each one. On Wednesday, February 17th, 2021, we will have a random drawing for our winner. We will announce the winner on our community tabs. If you are new and coming over from one of the other channels, welcome. We are so happy to have you join us. We release four videos each week, so you are sure to find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Now, let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use one of these mini tobacco baskets that I got from Hobby Lobby. They have them over in the Easter section and they're 40% off, so I only paid $2.40 for it. This simply blessed calendar from the Dollar Tree, a mini grapevine wreath left over from Christmas, some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree, these mini eggs that my neighbor got me at a yard sale, some mini craft sticks from Walmart, some chalk paint, some flowers from Joann's, some twine, some Mod Podge, 
my glue gun and some glue sticks and some tools from my work caddy. So for this calendar, I'm only going to use one of these small pieces on the back. I really like these little pictures that they print back here and I want the one that says bless this nest. So I cut that out and now I'm going to take six of my mini craft sticks and I'm going to use them kind of like a frame, but I also want them to look kind of like a fence. We'll keep two extra out to use as the bracing on the back. Now I'm going to take six of the little sticks and I'm going to cut off one end of them. I want one end to be flat, but I'm going to leave the other end rounded like the top of a fence. Now we're going to use our furniture repair markers that I get from the Dollar Tree and we're going to stain each one of our pieces. I love these markers. I use them all the time. They don't stink so I can use them inside and it is a really quick way of staining small pieces. I made sure that I stained the front, the back, and all the sides just in case you could see anything once it was put together. Now we're just going to glue our six sticks together using a little bit of hot glue. This went together real easily. I just made sure that I lined up the bottom as good as I could. And then once I had all six of them together, I take the other two and I glue them onto the back as support. Then I just trim off those little ends with my scissors. I wanted to distress my little fence a little bit, so I took some of my white Waverly chalk paint and my chippy brush and I just dry brushed over it really heavily to give it some character. Now we're going to take that little piece that we cut out of the calendar and I use my Mod Podge and put a really heavy coat on it and then I just stick it right down onto my little fence and we have a cute little sign. Now I'm going to take that tobacco basket and I took off that twine because they had it hanging from the corner and I actually want it to hang straight. And I took my little sign and I glued it up close to the top at an angle. And then I took that little grapevine wreath and I set it there in the edge and I used glue right where it touches. Now this is sitting at an angle. I have one side of it on the edge of the tobacco basket and the other side is actually touching the sign. Once I get that in there, I use some Spanish moss that I push down in there and form, and voila, we have the perfect little nest. Now I'm going to take three of these little eggs out of these mini egg ornaments that my neighbor picked up for me and cut off the strings, and then I will just glue them down into my nest. Now you can also find these little mini eggs at Hobby Lobby, and I think I've even seen them at the Dollar Tree. I thought my little basket needed a little something else. It seemed a little bare there in that corner. So I took some of these pretty little blue flowers that I had picked up from Joann's and I pulled off just a little bit of them to make a small bouquet. And then I wrapped it with a piece of twine and tied it into a knot and I glue it over there into that corner. Yep, I ended up using the twine that I was supposed to reuse for the hanger, but that's okay. I have some twine on hand, so I'll be able to make a new hanger. I just kind of pull that down in there and then use a little bit of hot glue to secure it. Now we'll cut off an extra piece of twine, thread it through the top there at the center, tie a knot in it to make a hanger, and trim it off. And there's our finished piece. This one was so simple and it took me less than 10 minutes to make, but I absolutely love it. It is so spring and so fresh and I am enjoying having it as part of my home decor. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these plastic fences that I got at the Dollar Tree. This frame that I got at Hobby Lobby when it was 90% off. But if you don't have a frame like this, you can always use just a piece of wood and distress it. One of these battery powered candles that I got at the Dollar Tree because that is our challenge from May May at May May Made It. These tin snips, which are the best thing to use to cut this fence, but I didn't realize it at first and I started out using a utility knife and my wire cutters. And finally, some white Waverly chalk paint. 
The first thing I want to do is separate this fence into four pieces. I'm going to start out by cutting down the middle and then I move and decide, hey, let's go ahead and cut off that middle piece at the bottom. And I've pretty much got the middle piece apart. But as I told you, it was kind of difficult at first because I was using a utility knife and my wire cutters. And I'm going to cut off those ends and cut off the connector pieces on the outside of my fencing. And I was still using my utility knife and my wire cutters. But you can see right here, I'm going to first draw a line down the middle so I can get as close as possible. And then I get a clue. And I go in with these tin snips that I found in my husband's drawer. And it cut through the plastic fencing like butter. So I just draw another line and cut apart the last two pieces. Now I'm going in with this white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to paint my pieces, but I'm not going to paint them completely. I'm going to leave some of the black showing. I'm going to be really heavy handed in some areas and then I'll go a little lighter in others. We want it to look as much like wrought iron as possible. And now the next part is to go in and glue my four pieces into a square. We're making a lantern. This part took about 20 minutes, so it wasn't as quick as it looks on the video. And then I just put it on my frame. I'm using it as a stand and place in my candle. And there it is on my table. I think this turned out cute. Just a quick and simple project. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use one of these little coffee mugs that I got from the Dollar Tree. They sell them in the back where they have the party supplies. Some of these little flowers that I got from Joann's and some lamb's ear that I got from Hobby Lobby. Some floral foam, some chalk paint in white and ballet slipper pink, and some tools from my work caddy. So we're gonna take one of our little cups and we're going to paint it with our ballet slipper pink Waverly chalk paint. I am loving this color for the spring. It's so fresh and so pretty and I've got a ton of it in my office. For this plastic cup, I gave it two coats. For the first coat, I'm just doing small little strokes and I'm keeping it as light as possible because even though the chalk paint will cover this plastic, if you're not careful, your brush will pull it back up off of it. So I gave it a light coat let that completely dry, and then I went back and did another coat on top of that. Now, my paint was close to the end of the bottle, and it's starting to dry out, I guess, and it had almost like some chunks in it, which left some texture on this, but I actually like that. It gave it that pottery look that I was really wanting for this piece. Once both coats were dry on our cup, I took my Waverly white chalk paint and my chippy brush and I did some heavy distressing on it. All I do is dip my brush into the lid and then I rub it off on my paper and I just go over it. Um, I actually used a pretty heavy hand on this. I was loving how it looked. It was making it look so old and like some pottery that had been left outside for several years. So I just kept going over it and going over it until I got exactly what I liked and then I set it aside. Now we're just going to take our floral foam and cut it so that it fits in our cup and trim off those ends. And then I take some of these pretty little pink flowers I got from Joann's and stick those down in there. And I took apart the other little pink flowers, I'm not sure what those are, and stuck those around. 
and then I took some of this lamb's ear that I get from the wedding section at Hobby Lobby and I cut it into pieces and kind of stuck it around along the edges. And there's our finished piece. This one was so simple to put together, but I absolutely love it. I think it is so stunning and it really does look like a pottery picture. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye, y'all!